It's Thunder Bob. I'm out here at the 2007 Bonneville Salt Flats races. I'm here with Keith Ball for Bikernet TV. He's running the assault weapon. He's going for a world record. Let's have him talk about the process of building the bike. We started with some with Valerie's measurements. We started with an artist concept drawing. Then we worked from there to a, uh, a more detailed concept drawing using her measurements. From that point, then we uh, then we had the frame built, Paco Manufacturing, a uh, a very vintage custom motorcycle manufacturer, built us this one-off frame to be stretched eight inches in the front and six inches in the rear so Valerie could lay down on this thing so she wouldn't be in a crouching position. From that point, then we tried to build everything to be as aerodynamic with uh, eyeball engineering as possible. We never got to a wind tunnel. I read a lot about wind tunnels. I studied aerodynamics as much as I could, but from, you know, from a garage standpoint, uh, from eyeball engineering standpoint. So that's, then we took everything from that standpoint, from the building the tank with the cowling on it so she could get behind it. Then we started, we did the fairing, we did a, a fender to give the bike sort of the shape of a wing so that it would buffer the wind out and then close narrowly, narrowly on the rear. We wanted to make the rear as narrow and as pointed as possible, sort of like the shape of a wing. In most cases, the most aerodynamic shape on earth is the shape of a wing or a teardrop. So we tried to make the bike like that. We still don't know, and maybe between now and next year, we'll actually get this bike in a wind tunnel and test it. And then we'll really find out what it's doing. But that's gonna be the key figure. Uh, the fender really was a key element, and we waited seven months for a front end that never showed up. And in seven months, we finally decided we gotta do something else. And Harley Davidson helped us out with this front end. Then we built the front end. Um, the tank was uh, actually a custom chrome tank and just worked out to be perfect. And then uh, Guard Hollinger built us this cowling and dash for it. So then the, we have a pad here so that Valerie can actually put her chin on the pad and get down as low as possible so that she doesn't create an obstacle for the wind. Um, then the fender, the rear fender, the chain guard, everything was designed to make the bike come to a point at the rear. We built a, the oil tank underneath it. We made the oil tank pointed, sort of like a sports bike, so that the air would pass underneath the bike as simply as possible and not create lift. If you create lift, then you lose traction. So the whole bike was designed so the air could close neatly and easily around it. Now, who the hell knows if I did anything right, we won't know until we get it into a wind tunnel. Or, like uh, Barry Wardlaw says, and Barry built the engine, he says, this is the great white dyno out here on the Bonneville Salt Flat. So if it works out here and if we get the speeds we want, well, we must be doing something right. We built the exhaust. Even the exhaust, we tried to keep it in tight. And we were going to use a dual exhaust system. But uh, Dave Rash from DND Exhaust Systems in, um, in Texas, he recommended and he's proven that a collector system will give me 20 more horses. And he was really convinced that we should go with a collector system. He gave me the formula, a stepped formula, that starts off with inch and seven eighths pipes for, for 14 inches, then go to, goes to two inch pipes until the pipes are exactly 35 inches in length and then he put a megaphone on the end of it. So we worked with Dave over the phone, he gave me the system over the phone, we actually made the pipes, and the first, first set of pipes that they stuck out too far, we were really concerned about that, because we felt like if anything's sticking out, it's slowing us down. So we got a way out, whether we want more horsepower or we want to be slowed down by the wind. So we actually, uh, I worked with Dave, and we were able to push the pipes in closer, so the primary sticks out about the same distance on one side as the pipes do out on the other side. So we tried to keep it as narrow as possible. We built the bike exactly to Dave's specifications. Then he recommended that we not heat wrap the pipes. He said heat wrapping the pipes actually keeps heat inside the pipes, and that slows the exhaust down. So we jet hotted the pipes to make them to make the air, the uh, exhaust slip through them as quickly as possible. Um, 
we we actually made the bars originally I was going to make a fairing come out around the bars and sometime in the future we'll probably do that um, but we made these bars we had them bent out of stainless steel I'm running these grips these grips are um, were made handmade by Gene Shakov, who was a hamster and a friend of mine years ago and he died a few years ago and it's sort of a tribute to him the bike is a, is a, in a memorial to uh, Will Phillips who did all my suspension on the uh, salt shaker last year and we're actually running his steering dampener on this bike this year Will Phillips designed the true track that saves guys lives all over the country on uh, on touring motorcycles and uh, we have his name pinstriped on the side of the panel on our rear panel um, the engine was designed by Barry Wardlaw uh, Barry uh, Barry has designed these 120 inch panhead engines. They're all aftermarket. Uh, this one he went to really great lengths to make it a nitrous a friendly engine. The top of the pistons are 700 thousandths thick. Uh, he moved the piston rings down 300 thousandths. Uh, all in an effort to make this engine user friendly for nitrous. The, even the transmission, it's a Baker direct drive transmission. It's a five speed transmission but we put a uh, uh, we put a drum on it so that uh, neutral would be all the way at the bottom so Valerie doesn't have to look and try to find neutral she just goes all the way to the bottom and she's in neutral uh, the wheels are uh, American wheel uh, the rear wheel is a solid wheel and the front wheel is almost razor sharp spokes on it it's a three spoke billet wheel and it's cut by renegade wheels and uh, the rule for uh, running on Bonneville is you have to have 25 35 percent open area in the front in case you get hit by a side wind and it throws you off uh, off course um, these seats we actually designed the seats again for Valerie so that she could rest her chin on the front uh, and that she would have a decent seat on the back and it would fit her and then Dwayne Ballard covered the seats um, this, uh, this year, we were, uh, last year we ran without a speedometer. The speedometer wasn't working. We had no RPMs. We didn't know shit as we were going down the track. But this year we have an AIM Sports data acquisition system on it. And so we're getting a lot more information. We're getting heat ranges on the uh, exhaust. Um, we're getting RPM. Uh, we're getting speed. We're getting um, oil pressure uh, and a number of other elements that help us and we're actually being able, uh, be, being able to download our runs onto a computer and then check them out. The tires, uh, the tires for Bonneville are shaved. They're Avon tires. They're narrow tires, but they've been shaved and flattened out for, uh, for uh, maximum traction on the Bonneville salt flats. Um, it's, it's proven in, in, when people first told me about shaving tires, I thought, oh, come on, give me a break. But, Actually, if you look at a, at a, a, a cross-section of a tire, you'll see that when it's going straight down the road, you have a very tiny patch on the ground. But now tires are designed so when you're in a turn, you have a wider patch for traction in turns. So what we did by shaving the rear tire is we added to the patch on the ground going on a straight line, which obviously will make us go stick to the ground a lot, a lot better down the salt flat, which the salt flats is a delicate surface to run on in any condition, but you need to have as much working for you as possible. The uh, front end on this bike actually turned out to be a great front end. It's a, it's a brand new Dynaglide 0607 Harley Davidson 49 millimeter front end. It's, it's a massive semi narrow glide front end. And uh, I think it's just perfect for this bike. It worked out to be great. The the rake of the, of the frame is 34 degrees. It's a good a good solid rake. It should be very stable. And uh, but we didn't mess with the trees at all. It's uh, you know it's a uh, not a rake trees. Uh, nothing's messed with as far as the trail goes. We should have substantial trail, six seven inches of trail. 